bypass? Well, tunnel bypass is a feature that allows you to take defined customer traffic and have that exit and go out to the internet over a defined circuit. Uh, this then bypasses the data tunnel that comes back into your data center. Uh, so that can actually be a, a very good thing for you and uh, something that you do want. Here's a diagram, and as we do go through this, I will be referring back to this diagram. Uh, in the diagram, we have defined carrier one as the bypass uh, circuit or leg, if you will. And the uh, you can see in the red the traffic that we have defined. In this case, it's things like maybe YouTube, Netflix, or other social media bulk traffic, basically, is being bypassed from the tunnel and headed directly out the Internet access from carrier one. All uh, other traffic is going to go through the tunnel and that is packets are then uh, uh, spread out across circuit one and two and into your data center where you will do with it as you wish. Now you're probably saying, well, what can I do with this and what kind of things can I use this for? So, uh, oh, and uh, we should actually say first, uh, things to know about tunnel bypass. Uh, tunnel bypass is source natted, if you will, and what that means is we use the circuit's IP address that we have defined as our tunnel bypass, and we are going to then run all the traffic out that that is defined. Of course, all traffic on the return will come back through that to the appropriate socket or customer application that is running then on the LAN. In order to set this up, you need to define the tunnel, and that is what packet filter it will I use for this particular custom customer, and uh, it's called a classification profile. So we will build that classification profile a little later and show you how it's done. Now, not only do you have to create the uh, custom classification profile, but then you have to go into the bond and tell it to use that classification profile and then define the circuits that will be used as bypass. So now we'll take a look at the use cases. You know, how, how can I use this? Or what would I use this for? And probably the most prevalent use case that we see uh, for tunnel bypass is a, one of our partners or many of our partners are, are voice providers. They provide their customers with voice. And really to them, it's important that they provide QoS and that they have the ability to have multiple circuits for that voice to run on. But that's the only traffic that they want back into their data center. And they would like to be able to bypass uh, all of the other traffic to a defined leg. And that's exactly what we are able to do uh, with this. Another use case is one of your customers has the need to provide, let's say, Wi-Fi for their patrons. They don't want that Wi-Fi traffic in their corporate tunnel or to go back into their uh, private applications that are in your data center. And so what they want to do is they want to be able to bypass that patron traffic and keep that unwanted traffic now or split it off of the tunnel and run it directly out to the internet. And what this does is allows you to reduce costs because you don't need to now purchase, or your customer won't need to purchase that additional circuit. They're, they can actually utilize that. Another thing that uh, comes from this as a byproduct is you, you can now rate limit that patron traffic going to the internet uh, so that uh, it, you know, Patrons, you maybe don't want to be running up a big bill if you have circuits that uh, cost you money if, from running data through them, or maybe you just want to rate limit that traffic so that patrons can get their emails, maybe do a little bit of uh, surfing of the web to look at your products, what have you, uh, but you don't want to uh, keep them around too long by having lots of bandwidth for them. Use case number three, that's where an end customer wants to bypass that bulk traffic. Uh, so maybe in their corporate private wide area network, you know, they, they have applications that they want to bring back into their uh, core. 
what they don't want is that bulk traffic, you know, like YouTube videos or maybe just generic straight internet traffic. They want to bypass that and keep that out of their corporate tunnel, firewall that locally, and then run that out a defined circuit access out to the internet. Uh, so you can see that that actually plays well with all of this. And I'm going to jump back now to our tunnel bypass diagram. And so if you keep in mind those three scenarios, you can now see how you would uh, manage that. In the case where voice traffic, I want to run voice traffic through the multiple circuits back into my data center where it's going to then go to my PBX. Uh, or to my VoIP system. And now what I want to be able to do is I want to run all of the other uh, customer data and run that through a firewall out to the CPE device and then out to the internet and bypass your data center completely. Now, likewise, if uh, you have a customer who has that Wi-Fi, and uh, so what they want to do is they want to hang a Wi-Fi router here off of the uh, CPE device. Now they can define that traffic to go to a specific carrier and then out to the Internet and thereby bypassing uh, their uh, corporate uh, wide area network. So you get the idea there. Um, how do we actually go about configuring all of this? Well, it's actually very easy. Uh, I'm going to actually show you this, uh, but the quick points are we create the classification profile. Uh, so we add that, we name it, we assign it to the space, set a target, and then we add a filter. And the filter tells us what traffic is actually going to go where. Uh, then we go into the bond itself, we choose the profile and we enable the primary secondary legs if required and then we test it and we make sure that it's all going to work. So uh, let's jump in now and actually do that. And we want to go here. So here we are and uh, we are in our management system. And the first thing that we are going to do is we're going to go to policies and classification. Now, this is where we are going to create that classification profile where we define what is going to happen. So we're going to add a classification profile. We're going to give that uh, classification profile a, a name. And in this case, we're going to call it bypass test 001. I got one too many zeros there. Uh, we are going to select the space. Now, I am doing this in my demo system, and I only have one space. So I am going to uh, select that space. And now I am going to define where that data is going to go. Now, in this particular case, I'm going to pretend that we are bypassing all traffic except for voice traffic. And so in this case, my target is that I'm going to be bypassing all of the data out through the defined circuit, and I'm only going to keep uh, my voice traffic going over the tunnel. So there we are. We have now created the classification profile. Now what I need to do is I need to add a filter. And so I'm going to get, put a comment in here on my filter. And we're going to call this a voice to uh, data center. And the target for this is actually going to be the tunnel, because I want my voice to be in the tunnel, and I want it to go to the data center to the PBX. But what I'm going to do is I want to make sure that all the rest of that data that customer has is going to bypass me. Now I need to be able to define this traffic that is voice traffic. Now, luckily, you can see I have a number of ways to be able to do this. Uh, 74, 121, 34, 5 happens to be my uh, corporate uh, PBX. 
And so I'm going to put that in as my destination. So I know all data destined to that IP address is my voice data, and I want that to go in the tunnel. Likewise, I can also set up a source. So on my LAN, if I had set up maybe a subnet, a 10-dot subnet, uh, as the source of all of my voice traffic, I could put that in and have that go through uh, to the tunnel. So I have many ways I can actually define my traffic. So let's save that. Now we have our classification profile and our packet filter all set up. So what I want to do right now is I'm going to come back to our bond and I'm going to do a little speed test here before we get going. I want you to see what the data rate is of our tunnel. And so we have about 13, 14 megabits uh, of tunnel traffic that I am able to use. And we'll come back to that. Uh, here on this secondary tab is what is my IP address? And this is important too for us when we go to do testing. So we can see that 74, 121, 3550 is the IP address that I am on. So let's come back now to our speed test. Our speed test is done. So I was able to get 15.4, 15.5 by 3.78 by utilizing the tunnel. Let's come back now to uh, my bond. And here's my bond. I'm going to go into my bond and point out a couple of things for you. So first of all, let me scroll down and we can see the connected IP, 74, 121, 35, 49. That is the IP address of my CPE. And if you'll remember, my IP address was .50. And so I can see now that all of my traffic is going through the tunnel. Here's the uh, circuits, and let's go in now under policies, uh, and there's our classification, there's our classification. We'll go back to our bond, and go into our bond, and go to tunnel bypass. Now what we're going to do is we're going to choose our profile, and so multiplied bypass test 001, there we are. And now I need to define a leg or a circuit that all our bypass traffic is going to go on. And so I am going to pick uh, our, our DSL-1, it's three by seven. Now I can also select other um, circuits here if I want, but now I need to change my priority. So if I make the priority on our cable connection as two, it will use that, but it will only use it in the case where our DSL has failed. I'm going to take that off. I am going to change a couple of the other um, priorities just so you can see these priorities and what they are. Uh, so uh, the uh, DSL number two, which happens to be offline, is our third priority, and then our failover circuit, which is our LTE, would actually be set as five if I was to enable these. So let's save that. And you'll also notice that I have selected some amount of bandwidth here, in this case 30%, uh, just like the uh, QoS profiles of our system. This is elastic. If the circuit can use all of the bandwidth here, the three megs by 700K, it will, unless the tunnel needs that traffic, in which case the tunnel will take 70% and relegate the uh, bypass to its 30%. Let's come back now to our bond. And let's take a look. And what we see now is our DSL circuit is being used for tunnel bypass. If we come up here now to what is my IP, and I do a refresh on this, you'll notice that the IP address changed. I am now on a public IP address, and I might, uh, this is bulk traffic, just browser traffic, and it is now headed out our uh, DSL circuit. 
So let's try our speed test again and see what we're going to get. We should not get 12 megs. We should get something less than 3 megabits per second because of my this traffic now is bulk traffic and it is being bypassed out our DSL. And sure enough, you can see uh, we are doing about 2.2, 2.3, about 2.4 megabits per second on the download of that. So indeed, I am now being bypassed uh, as far as internet traffic is concerned. Uh, if I was talking to you on a phone, uh, uh, that was behind the uh, demo system here. Unfortunately, I'm in Toronto today, not in Vancouver, so I couldn't have a phone behind that. Uh, but my phone data would be running through the tunnel to my PBX and uh, would be getting the QoS, and I could actually do failover for